Two bikes from the same brand with seemingly overlapping capabilities. Looking at both really does invite the question, which one do I get? The X or the Redwood? First and foremost, it's probably worth noting, and you have probably noticed that, yes, my X is completely and utterly far from stock. Also, it's the older style without the full carbon fork. The Redwood, it's pretty well stock, save for a different seat post and saddle. What does that have to do with any of this? Kind of nothing. I just know it's going to come up in the comments. What you should know is these days is the Redwood build kit and the X's build kit. That is the shifters, the drivetrain itself. They're, they're pretty well exactly the same between the two. One by Microshift Advent X with an 11 through to 48 cassette, a 38 tooth chain ring. I believe they all use the same handlebar and same stem now. The seat post diameter is different, so of course you get a different seat post between the two, but the saddles are the same. The most noteworthy differences between the two is wheels. The Redwood comes stock with a tubeless ready rim where the X does not. The bottom bracket shell is mountain bike width on the Redwood and road bike width on the X, and the brakes are different. The dual sided like mechanical piston brakes that are on the Redwood are definitely a step up over over the Tektro flat mount brakes that come on the X. Out of the differences between the two, the wheel set with the tubeless ready rim and the sealed bearing through axle hubs on the Redwood really, really help justify the $200 variance between the two builds. You certainly do get more out of the box on paper value out of the Redwood than you kind of do out of the X. But for $200 difference, Maybe those things don't matter to you. But based on the average type of question that I receive when people are trying to decide between these two, it's not the perceived value that ever ends up being the problem. It's which bike should I get for the type of riding I wanna do? And that is what I'm gonna try and answer for the rest of this video with my opinions between the two. So for the sake of comparison, I printed out both the sizing sheets for the X and the Redwood and took the liberty to take, in my opinion, some of the more interesting geometries. Top two blank equivalent between the two, 55 centimeters. Both my bikes are size large. C2 blank on the Redwood is published at 55 centimeters. That measured out perfectly. Published on the X is 54 centimeters. I measured it at 56, which made sense because I've always found that this bike is taller and more difficult to stand over than the Redwood has. Head tube length on the Redwood, five mils longer than the X. Stack height, unsurprisingly, a little bit taller on the Redwood than the X, which makes sense. It's more of a gravel, like adventure oriented bike. Whereas when the X came out, it was more of like a cyclocross gravel bike. So a little more aggressive, lower position on the X than on the Redwood. That, that jives, that makes sense. But what I'm surprised about is the reach. The published reach measurements between the two actually shows the Redwood as the longer, more laid out bike than the X. Albeit it's by eight millimeters, but it is surprising nonetheless. Obviously I can't confirm that measurement because I don't have the stock brakes, handlebar or stem or saddle or seat posts on the X anymore. So my reach and stack is gonna be different than what they have published. Head tube angles between the two, there's a one degree difference, 71 on the Redwood, 72, very cyclocrossy on the X. Wheelbase, unsurprisingly, quite a bit longer on the Redwood than the X. The same thing can kind of be said for chainstay length. There's a published 440 millimeter length of chainstay on the Redwood, whereas it's not published, but I measured 425 millimeters for the X. The last geometry of actual interest to me is bottom bracket drop. There is a difference of 1.6 millimeters between the two. The Redwood has a 1.6 millimeter, slightly higher bottom bracket than the X does. So what does all the geometry talk and like comparing the numbers on those charts actually mean for choosing between these two? So let's draw a graph. Let's draw a graph for fun here. So here we have a table that shows like 
road asphalt, perfect, perfect asphalt right here on this end. In the middle, we're gonna call this like gravelly fire roads, or as Russ likes to call some of these rocks, baby heads, that creeps me out, so I don't like to say it too much. And then at this end, just straight up mountain bike trails. Like maybe not the hardest downhill trails you've ever thought of, but certainly some challenging single track that maybe you'd like to have a trail bike on. Let's start for simplicity with the X. It's certainly not an all out full on road bike, but it's definitely not a mountain bike. I also don't know that I would even go as far as to say that it's like the perfect big, big rock gravel bike, but it can do it. It's capable of doing it. So as we get away from perfect road asphalt where it's not going to shine its hardest, but as the roads start to break up, and maybe you're not gonna wanna bring your super fancy carbon road bike out on, it starts to shine. It starts to show its strength. And then it's gonna cover all of the different road features and problems and textures and everything up to and including some of the harder gravel roads. As a matter of fact, it'll go past some of the difficult gravel roads, but the enjoyment is certainly gonna go down. As you're starting to get into this area, we're starting to talk about the world of mountain bike single tracks where it'd be nice to maybe have something a little more aggressive or a mountain bike along with you, though it can be a little bit boring in this area. Now for me, in my opinions, where I would classify the Redwood at is it has some overlap of capabilities, of course, to the X, but not as far into the road world as what the X has to offer. And it'll go a little bit further than what the X can do. Though I would consider its range of usability to actually be a little bit smaller than what the X is. It is definitely noteworthy that the Redwood's not a replacement for getting into the mountain bike world. It just, it just isn't. But it is a wildly enjoyable companion on lots and lots of different types of gravel, fire road, like chunky single track areas where like a mountain bike might be kind of boring. This, this is the area that the Redwood really starts to shine. Okay, put even simpler, the X, it really is just kind of a cyclocross bike. They're now more referring to it as a gravel bike. If you ask me if you're gravel curious, but you want to spend some time on the road and possibly one day want to try a couple cyclocross races, this is the bike. You can really push its limits off road. Trust me, I've done it. Or you can take it in the other direction if you find that you're not real crazy about a drop bar bike, super off road and just really lay this thing out built as a big tire disc brake road bike. It's also got more provisions on it for like racks and, and other attachments that you might wanna use for adventuring if you find yourself wanting to do that beyond cyclocross, road riding and stuff like that. It's, it's a good companion for pretty much anything you can decide to wanna do. And then there's this thing, the Redwood, that if you feel like you're gonna spend a lot more time on chunkier off-road, you really do wanna try the whole like riding some mountain bikey, chunky single track trails on a drop bar bike, the ability to run big, big 650B tires, especially out of the box, and then just endless options for bolting on basically whatever you could possibly want for this whole like bike packing thing, then this might make a little more sense to you, though it's abilities are narrowed a little bit. Just the fact that there's so much emphasis on provisions for racks, fenders, and so much emphasis on tire, it certainly takes away from some of the usability and the ability to make it a little bit more of a road machine. And I don't think that if I decided I wanted to do any cyclocross racing, that this would ever be the machine that I would ever go for. It's longer chainstay wheelbase, the 71 degree head tube angle, just sort of creates a little bit too slow of a handling bike for the tight, quick, nimble characteristics that you want out of a cyclocross race machine. Though I would say anybody who's considering the Redwood over the X probably isn't super interested in getting into the racing world as it is. And you're probably a little happier with that big tire, stable feeling machine that's just gonna kinda like plow through everything in front of it. So, which of the two would I have to recommend if you were on the fence and you weren't sure which you wanted to get between the two? Probably the X, 
That would be the sensible decision. But the redwood's just so much cooler looking.